Okay guys, so after I did my Asus Sabertooth P67 review, uh, it was some time ago now, but I had a lot of questions about the assist fan. Um, now the Sabertooth P67, you'll need to watch the review, I'll put a link up on the screen. Um, it has thermal armor, which is the sheath that you can see over it right now. And what that's meant to do is spread the cool air across the components. But if there's no cool air being blown underneath the thermal armor, then there's no cool air being spread across the components. Um, and if that's the case, then potentially um, the thermal armor could really heat up the motherboard even more. Theoretically, you would think so. Um, so what I'm doing is testing it without the assist fan, and then I'm going to test it with the assist fan. So basically I'm just running um, Prime 95 large FFTs for 30 minutes each to heat, heat it right up. Uh, and the good thing about this motherboard is it has thermal radar. And you can see thermal radar here. This is the software for it. But it's basically extra temperature sensors across the motherboard. So each of those little thermometers you can see is a temperature sensor and normally motherboards certainly do not have this many um, so thanks to all those temp sensors we can do some serious testing here and get some decent results so I'll just tell you the specs Sabertooth P67 2600K 4 gig of G-Skill 1600 MHz and an MSI 560 Ti with a NMX Revolution 1250 watt uh, Western Digital Caviar Black 1 terabyte SATA 3. Um, cooling the CPU is this Danger Den Triple Radiator Water Box. Okay, so Prime 95 has been running for 30 minutes. I'm just going to put the camera on the tripod so that we can have a good look at the temperatures. Because after this, we're going to compare it to 30 minutes of load with the assist fan. So I didn't mention the overclock that the system is running at. It's actually, the CPU is at 4.8 gigahertz. The memory is at 1600 megahertz, 88824, 1.6 volts. Uh, and there's actually 1.43 volts on the CPU. I'll just tell you the specifications on this particular fan that I used. The fan you need is a 50 by 50 by 10 fan, so any fan within those measurements is suitable. So I have actually removed the cover. Um, there's a little cover over this part of the board. And th there's some different screws included with the motherboard, longer screws. Um, so I've had to use those. And the fan plugs into a normal 3 pin PWM fan header and this particular fan header actually has uh, profiles which you can set from the BIOS now I haven't set any of those profiles I've just got the fan running at maximum RPM but if you wanted to quiet it down a little bit in this case it's not necessary because it's, it's a quiet fan already uh, but you can quieten it down if you want to so I'll just give you a listen to it You pretty much can't hear it over the water box. Um, so the specifications of the f this particular fan, it's a deep cool. It's a SF500, um, 4000 RPM, 9.59 CFM, 23 decibels. Okay, so Prime95 has been running for 30 minutes again. The room temperature is exactly the same as before at 33 degrees Celsius. Now, the current temperatures are on the left hand side and the right hand side temperatures are a screenshot of the results from without the assist fan. So left hand side is with the assist fan, right hand side is without the assist fan. Now pause that and check out those temperatures. There is some quite amazing differences there. Alright, so all those people out there wondering if the 
little extra fan on the Asus Sabertooth P67 actually makes a difference? Well the answer is it certainly does. I'm very impressed with the results actually and I'm quite surprised to to see that such a small fan that blows only a small amount of air uh, can make such a massive difference. Keep in mind the other way to get similar results is to install a downward blowing CPU cooler. Now I would say that the results might even be better because you know the fans on CPU coolers are a lot bigger than that than a little 50 millimeter fan you know we'll be talking 120 millimeter or 140 millimeter fans and they will be blowing warmer air uh, downwards onto the motherboard but still it'll be a lot more air so I think you can see where the air will go underneath it's all um, hollow around where the CPU is so yes a downward blowing CPU cooler um, will give you similar or better results so keep that in mind and I'd say that the either a downward blowing CPU cooler or the assist fan is essential when running this motherboard because even with the assist or I mean you can see the temperatures that I'm getting with and without the assist fan um, and they're quite high there's still some up in the red with the assist fan so anyway I better stop talking uh, I hope that gave some people some answers thanks for watching the video and please subscribe